Hello? Can you hear me? Have you ever heard of the curse of AI? It's the observation that artificial intelligence as a field can never make any progress because once something can be done by a computer, it's no longer considered intelligent behavior. So while AI has solved many problems, which at one time were considered to be totally AI problems, in retrospect, it has never accomplished anything. Tangentially, I think philosophy suffers from a similar problem. Whenever a philosopher discovers a whole new realm of interesting, meeting new problems, it eventually gets spun off into its own field. So likewise, philosophy never accomplishes anything and will forever remain the butt of tedious jokes. Anyway, like everyone else, I've been thinking about AI a lot this year. And while it's definitely nowhere close to a full generalized intelligence, I'm pretty happy to say it's achieving some level of semantic understanding. This isn't another Eliza. We tried blindly manipulating symbols like that for decades and got nowhere. This is different. Intelligent, but in a very narrow way, and that's interesting in its own right. I think that's the source of a lot of the unease around the subject. It's unsettling to realize just how finely intelligent behavior can be broken down without showing any sign of generalized intelligence the way we understand it in ourselves. Of course, that's always been the lesson of cognitive science, at least for me. Our own intelligence and consciousness are much more tenuous and limited than most people care to admit. So I've been following the news and playing with the tools and thinking these thoughts. But I haven't seen a use case that's compelling yet, at least not for myself. They're kind of like talking to the world's most knowledgeable 12 year old, a mile wide and an inch deep. Now, simulating the world's most knowledgeable 12 year old is very impressive, no doubt, but I don't particularly want to talk with the world's most knowledgeable 12 year old. Not for long, anyway. The novelty wears off quick. It's, it's not an interesting conversation to be had. So what could I make that required coherent responses to natural language input, but was fundamentally tedious and annoying to interact with? And that's when it hit me. We finally have the technology to make one of the most famous and influential AIs in science fiction history. The one we all saw as kids and couldn't forget. The one that will forever serve as a cautionary tale about giving a computer too much power. The one that, ah, uh, you've seen the video title and thumbnail and cold open. You're not fooled by this misdirection. Taki the Toaster from Red Dwarf. That's the one I mean. A cheap appliance designed to provide light breakfast conversation, but is so obsessed with its role of making toast that it is insufferable to talk to for any length of time. The perfect use for ChatGPT. I had a hypothesis, but I had to test it first. So I tried some prompts of the forum, respond to X as if you were a toaster named Taki Toaster who is obsessed with making toast. And it immediately worked. There was no excuse not to make it, assuming I could get the smarts to fit in a toaster body. I ordered a Raspberry Pi and started chaining together APIs. It needed to listen to the microphone, passing anything it heard to a speech recognition tool. When that indicated it had a complete phrase parsed, that text was passed to ChatGPT with the prompt as shown above. Then the output from that was run through a text-to-speech pipeline and played. Originally I tried a USB speaker, but it drew too much power, so I replaced it with this battery-powered amplifier. Finally, to make it a bit less annoying, I wanted it to only talk when someone was standing close to it and facing it directly. This seemed like the perfect excuse to play with the person sensor mentioned in a Void Star Labs video from a couple months ago. This little $9 board has a camera and just enough processing power needed to determine if it is seeing a face or not. The only output is a simple I2C feed that gives the bounding box for each face it sees, an ID number for each face that is moderately accurate at recognizing people it has previously seen, and a flag if the face is facing the camera or not. Cheap, trivial to integrate, and effective. Perfect. The next question, though, what physical form was this going to take? In the show, we actually see two incarnations. One early on, looking more like a classic 50s toaster, 
and then a rebuilt version after an accident involving a 5 pound sledgehammer, in a much more 90s futuristic LED covered version. This is the one that most people recreate, but honestly I've never been too wild about the design. And since we've seen two radically different forms already, I didn't feel too obliged to stick to a specific version. Also, I wanted to get this done in time for open sauce, so let's just find a commercial toaster, hopefully with a nice classical design, and gut that. And that left one obvious candidate. A smeg. This was the joke I and most other Americans originally missed about smeg. It was always meant to poke fun at clumsy, invented swear words in science fiction. We just lacked the cultural background to understand it. It was Ford Prefect all over again. I found a broken one being sold for parts on eBay, which was good because new ones are quite pricey. Also, this excused me from trying to have it actually make toast as well. With the toasting mechanism removed, I had a cavernous space in which to work. I decided to jazz it up a bit by adding a servo to move the toasting arm. I was able to use the mounting holes for the original circuit board to attach a bracket on which both the pie and the servo would be mounted. These slots let me adjust the servo so it lined up with the slot in the side of the case. The ball on the end is original, but since the original motion was purely linear, I had to make a longer replacement shaft to let the servo cover the entire range of motion. Originally I wanted the arm to move up and down as it talked, as a kind of mechanical waveform visualization. This turned out to be a really annoying problem to solve, however, and lacking time before open source, I decided to just have it show the current state of the system. Idle, listening, processing, and talking. The person sensor camera peeks out through a discreet hole drilled in the case, held in with hot glue. A rather barbaric solution maybe, but fast, easy to match the weird curve of the case, and guaranteed not to short out anything on the board. Power was supplied using the original 120 volt cord, with a USB power hub hardwired in. I did, of course, keep the metal case grounded, though it wasn't the most elegant of solutions. I don't have any video of it at open source, sadly, and not just because I'm an amateur YouTuber who immediately and inevitably forgets to video things when I get busy. The hall was just too loud and the network too unreliable to have it running there. But I can report that on Friday, before the event opened, in testing it made a devastating response to a question about the Golden Gate Bridge, where it said it was much more interested in the golden brown of toast. So what's it like in practice? Greetings, fellow toast enthusiasts. Need some toast? I'll gladly make you some. Just pull the lever and watch the magic happen. Slow and easy to confuse by talking over it, leading it to respond to nonsensical sentence fragments. You've got to wait until the arm is back in the listening state before addressing it. But with a bit of patience, you can have a real conversation with it, just like in the show. What is the weather going to be like today? Toast is my number one priority, so I'm not the best one to ask about the weather. I'd say the best thing to do is to look outside and see what it's like. If it's sunny, you can make some lovely toasts outside. And just like in the show, it's an amazingly aggravating experience. I don't want any toast. Oh come on, come on and let me make you a perfect slice of toast. You know you can't resist my absolutely delicious toasty goodness. I don't want any smegging toast. Oh, come on. I just love making toast so much. Why don't you let me make you some? Can't you talk about anything else? Of course I can talk about other things besides toast. I mean, I am a toaster after all. But my heart lies in the art of making toast, and it's a subject I can talk about for hours. Did I learn anything from this? Well... It was definitely eye-opening to see how easy it was to chain together those cloud APIs. And I had never used a Raspberry Pi before, or I2C, and I'm glad to have added both to my toolkit finally. The Person Sensor is a really cool product that deserves more attention. And robotics projects, they still come down to messy environmental factors that are easy to overlook in the lab. Honestly though, playing with Dr. Spezzo as a kid was more fun. Hello Autoparsec, my name is Dr. Spatzel. I am here to help you. Say whatever is in your mind freely. Our conversation will be kept in strict confidence. Memory contents will be wiped off after you leave.
So, tell me about your problems. Really? Does that bother you? Like and subscribe.